So, how is everyone? Good. Turning problems at five. Okay, so I forgot my cards today. So definitely put up your uh, put your name tags and all. I'll throw I'll throw a marker or whatever. Okay, so you're sitting in the shark tank and you say, I'm asking for a $150,000 investment for 23% of my company. What is the implied valuation of that company? Six fifty. Six hundred fifty. Yeah. So one hundred fifty thousand is equal to point two three of that, right? Six hundred fifty-two is equal to one hundred fifty thousand divided by three x is equal to what? Six fifty-two one hundred seventy-four. That's a very specific valuation that someone is. <laughs> Well, that's not. So is asking for. <laughs> okay, question is, is this value the uh, pre-money valuation or the post-money valuation? Post-money. We have a debate. It's going to be post. Let's argue. Who said pre and then who said post and we'll argue. You argue for pre? Who argues for pre? <laughs> uh, you guys are backing down? Go ahead. Could be right. Post. Ben? So it's post because you're taking into account the 150 that's already gone in for 23%. How do you know that you're doing that? Because uh, of the math. That's how you do that. That was a dumb question. Yes, yeah, so the answer is that this, um, the way we set up the problem here is that. Uh, it's as though the 150,000 has already been invested, right? So if you had already invested 150,000, your 150,000 dollar investment would would be good for 23 percent of the company, right? So what's the pre-money valuation? If this is post-money. How do you find it? <coughs> is this? I'm not sure how you find it. Subtract 150,000 from this, right? Okay, so it'd be. 502,174. That's also a very specific <laughs> pre money value. Okay, does everyone have that? So if, uh, if they ask this question, um, if there, let's say there was 500,000 shares currently outstanding, 500,000 shares currently outstanding, how many new shares would have to be issued to the investors for this? Hundred and fifty thousand dollar investment. How many new shares issued? Someone said Crawford, what did you say? Walk us through how you do it. So you're increasing it by 0.23. Okay, so the new ownership percentage divided by your old ownership, which is 0.7. <coughs> Times the number of shares outstanding that you have, which is five hundred thousand, we said, mm -hmm. equals one hundred forty-nine thousand three hundred fifty-one. Three hundred fifty-one. Yep. Okay. How could you check if this answer is right? Plug it back in. So, how many total shares are outstanding now? Six hundred forty-nine thousand. So one forty-nine by three fifty-one over this total amount should equal what? Point three percent. Everyone agree? What is the price that the investors paid per share? How did you find that out? $150,000 divided by $149,351. Yeah, it's approximately $1.02 or something like that. I don't know. I made that up so you can check that. Let me not write that because you can write that in your notes and then some Saturday night at 12 o'clock. That's right, you guys are studying seven out of twelve o'clock. Dollar point oh oh five. Yeah. Four. Four. 
Come on now, Spencer. Well, okay. I was just trying to. Right now, my kid's doing. Uh, my kid's doing. Um, Scientific notation math. It's seriously the most fun thing. <laughs> I hate that. It's like things. it's questions like three point seven four times ten to the second minus two point five eight times ten to the second. I like you mean three hundred seventy four minus two hundred fifty eight. That's what we're doing. Come on. <laughs> so I was talking to my guy. He's like, no, 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 no. You gotta do it inside. <laughs> Uh, not a very good number. Yeah. Um, something about price range ratio. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, that's a good question. So, okay, so the example, let's give an example, okay? Um, Yeah, give me an example from home. The company, he wants to invest $5 million. The company's worth $8 million in sales in five years. And That's $8 million in sales in five years? Yes. The P.E. ratio is 15. P.E. ratio is 15. And he wants to invest. So that's kind of a misuse of the term P.E. because really what's being applied is <coughs> the um, price to the revenue. So okay, let me let me let me expand expound. So there's oops, remember one of the issues here was how we valued the company. Um, and we used the method of multiples. We said if the company has five million in revenue, five million in revenue. Sorry, you guys can't see what I'm saying. Like that. And. Uh, multiples in the market were, say, three people are paying three times revenue for, for a business that looks like this. Then the, we'd say the value of the business is 15 times three, so 15 million, right? Well, instead of using a multiple of revenue, you can also use a multiple of earnings per share, which is what a PE ratio is. So if a company had earnings per share of $2 per share, and, and the market was paying 20 times on a PE multiple, then you would say um, 20 times a dollar of earnings, then you would say this stock is worth $40 a share. But that would just be the equity value. That's not the total enterprise value. So it's just, so price to earnings ratio is a different metric that you can, you can value using multiple. <coughs> and that homework question, I'm almost sure <coughs> that I really mean um, price to revenue. So that's like market cap too? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, this would just be the stock price. So how would you find the market cap? The stock price. The total number of shares that would give you the total equity value. If there was no debt in the company. That would also be the enterprise value. So you're saying this company sells its value times the price per share. Its stock price. Its stock, if it was publicly traded, would be valued at 20 times the earnings per share. That is like, isn't it biased? What so, are the, what so, is what is the <coughs> this is what their earnings are, which is net income divided by total share size tax. But I don't, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't have no intention of getting into this at all. I'm just answering the homework question. I'm trying to give you a broad perspective on why I would use price earnings. I don't like that. Really that. Earnings will be neg negligible. Herbal biotech firms are trading in P/E ratios of 15. So, an E, instead of E, I would rather say price to revenue. Is that fair? So, I'm using the word earnings loosely. I should probably say price to revenue. You want to be like net income? Definitely not net income. Um, okay. So, what are the things I, what are the thing? what are the, so we, we walked through a little example here. What are the elements of the, what are the elements here? You need to know what are the different things I've asked you to find? Shares. Number of shares. Price per share. Price per share. Free money value. Free money. Post money. Anything else? The multiples. Yeah, enterprise value, right? Okay. 
let's make sure I'm clear. When I say enterprise value, I mean that's the that's the value of the whole entity. <coughs> so if you're talking about a big publicly traded corporation that has a lot of debt and a lot of equity, the enterprise value is the value of the debt and the value of the equity. In a startup, there's very very infrequently debt, so the enterprise value is just the value of the whole entity. So just be, also the value of the equity. Do just be the valuation. Yeah. Um, I guess enterprise value is pre-money and post-money, isn't it? That's a type of pre-money and post-money. So that's a little confusing. Anything else I've asked you? Not really. So this, so everyone feel comfortable that they can work through these kinds of things? Yeah? Good. Okay, yeah, sir. The pre-money is just 652. What's in the no, no, it's not, that's not the pre-money. I know, it's, it's that minus one. Yes, 652 minus. So um, it also says that this kind of 15% is that the same as like the 20% there? Nope, not at all actually. So uh, I used to teach this in a different way last year and the homework is reflecting that. But the way the homework is saying it is, um, the way the homework is saying it is, let's say, let's say a VC wants to invest in, well, it's okay. It's a red marker. This is the this is the one we want following. If there's any problem. so so let's say the VC wants to make a ten million dollar investment, okay, and it wants to invest in a company that they think will be generating fifteen million dollars of revenue five years from now, okay. So 15 million in revenue in five years. At the time, in five years from now, they project that revenue multiples would be six times revenue. So what, 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 if they sold that company in five years, what would the value of that company be? 90 million. 15 times six is equal to 90? Yeah. All right, it is. Okay, so that's the that's the value in fifteen in five years from now, right? So what's the present value of that? It's gonna be ninety million divided by one plus r to the fifth. fifth. Yeah. So the question is, what's r? What's the reasonable discount rate? Fifty. 50%. So call it fifty percent. So the present value would be equal to ninety divided by one point five to the fifth. What's that? Eleven million. Ooh. All right. They don't want to invest ten million. They want to invest three million. Okay. <laughs> well, fifty is a very, very high. Yeah. Why is it so high? Well, can it's like you're doing so much for that company. It's, it's not just like the time value, but you're on, you're investing a lot over that time period. Super risk. Okay. All right. So the way that they would adjust, actually, my colleagues and I have huge theoretical debates about whether that should be, whether you should ever have a discount rate that high because of reasons that we want to understand until we talk about cap M. But anyway, the convention is that because they're so risky, you discount those things with, with uh, high discount rate. I can tell you the essence of the debate. The essence of the debate is the technical definition of risk is covariance of this stuff with the market. Actually, venture capital stuff doesn't vary as high with the market as the percent discount rate would suggest. So the technical thing should be that you should have a lower discount right here and just hit the, hit the numerator with some uncertainty. But that's not the way to convince you that. So, so what's this number here? What is it, 11 million? 11.8? Oh my gosh, you guys just got to tweet the answers. 11.9? We rounded so many times last class. So that's the pre, what's that? We rounded so many times last class, so we have to keep the pretty Okay, good. So, uh, so this is the present value of this company, right? Did everyone see how we got the present value? We used the multiples and what the revenue was going to be in the future. We discounted those <coughs> the present value. So now we're just back to where we were here. What's the investment going to be? Three million in a company worth 11.9, which is, by the way, is this the pre-money or the post-money? Pre. This is actually the post because it implies that it wouldn't get to this without that investment having been made. True. All right. So you're going to have 3 million divided by 11.9, so that's going to give you some percent. 
this it's sort like of like 0.24 because it's almost 12. Three over 12. Okay, 0.24. Someone here is going to say it's 0.238. <laughs> <laughs> now we go 0.24 divided by 0.76. Let's say how many shares are outstanding? Let's say there's 600,000 shares outstanding. And you just, we're, we're back to where we were here. Right? Okay, so that should help answer how the homework is, how, the, how one of those problems is done. You just said there's 600,000 shares. I just assumed there's 600,000. Everyone got that? Yeah. Um, does it work if you do it like, okay, they have 3 million, they want 50% return. So, like, just find the future value of 3 million at 50%, like they're getting 50% interest. And then divide that by the 90 million that it'll be worth in five years. Um, and then say, okay. What so are you trying to find in that scenario? The percentage of the company that you're um, Maybe. We'd have to work through it and see if we can get there. Okay. That's not really the way they, they do it. They think. Really, the way they think is. Um, are we going to lose all the money on this deal or not? Uh, yeah, hold on. Perry was first. So when you're looking at the percent of ownership that you'll have after the $3 million investment, uh -huh. you look at that percent <coughs> and you, to determine um, what percent of ownership you'd have if you already made that, not what the current what the company is currently at. Yes. Because the present value is $11.9 million, assuming that you put in the $3 million. Yes. So when you're doing a contract to determine how much percent ownership a PE firm will have, mm -hmm. you include the additional revenue they'd make from from the investment in the first place, right? This, yes, that's right. But this is why I did, this is why I don't like this method so much. This is why I didn't teach it this way. Because okay. I I would prefer to just say, what do we think the thing is worth today? Yeah, that's what. Okay. What what would our investment maker worth today, and then and then go forward? Okay. But this is this is a way that other people have done it, and it shows up in this one homework problem. So I just wanted to work. Okay, okay, I'll skip this. But actually, after having thought it, about it and, and, and seeing a lot of deals, I decided that's, I'm not going to do that. I'm not how I was going to do this other way. Actually, to be honest with you, I'd forgotten that there was a moment problem that asked it that way. So we did it together just to understand it. John? <coughs> yeah, before we totally shift gears and go into IPOs, the last two times I think we wanted to talk about your examples that you've done. Oh, are we, yeah. Are we, can we get into those? Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out when to do that because um, we're running out of time. Right. <laughs> I'll tell you about one. Go ahead. How about that? Is that a good compromise? Yes. How about you just tell us what it is? Like a like an investor spiritual thought. <laughs> I think those uh, those are conflicting <laughs> investor spiritual thought. That's like an oxymoron. <laughs> okay, so this is a company called Orca Health. I'm on the board of this company. Uh, two about 18 months ago, we invested. Our little group invested um, enough money to be the board. Um, so here's what they do. This is really cool. Let me actually let me tell you the story. Uh, this is worth a backstory. So one of the things I love, here's one of the things I love about venture capital. This this is borderline spiritual. Uh, I have a brother who is a two years older than me. He's my closest brother. I have lots of brothers. Have I ever told you how many brothers I have? There's seven sons in my family. I have six brothers, and they're all not slouches. Uh, I think I'm probably the least successful of all my brothers. Um, they, uh, so this one brother is a, two years older than me. Is a he's, he has a medical degree and a PhD. He's an MD PhD in cancer research. And so he 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 had a faculty job at Stanford. Um, turn off the counter for just a second. 